In this presentation, we will pay payroll taxes. In other words, we have run payroll, we have processed payroll, we have had withholdings for payroll and incurred the employer payroll taxes. And now we'll go through the process of paying those taxes within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We'll consider our project this time by first going to the reports. So we'll go to the reports on the left side. We're going to generate a balance sheet, our favorite report. So we'll select that balance sheet and we'll scroll up top, changing the dates from 010119 to 123119. And that's January through December 2019. Run that report. Now we're thinking about taxes again, and that's one of those tricky kind of areas that always kind of muddies the waters when we think of the taxes. If we scroll down on the balance sheet at this point in time in the liabilities section, we'll see that we have payroll liability. It might be more specifically called or might better be called the account payroll tax liability. This is what we have incurred as we've processed payroll for liabilities. If we select that item, if we select this item, we will see the detail. Note, as we work through this problem, we're not setting up with the paid payroll. We're entering this information as if an outside payroll company was going to process the payroll for us. And then we took that information and entered it into our system with the use of checks and journal entries as we would if we had an outside system to process the payroll. Note, once again, there's multiple ways that we can process the payroll within QuickBooks. QuickBooks has different formats and different levels of service within payroll, which would be an add-on service. We may look more into payroll itself, specifically at a later time, and think about some of the paid options within QuickBooks to process payroll. Whether we do payroll within QuickBooks or outside of QuickBooks, use QuickBooks as support or someone else as outside support outside of the QuickBooks system, we still have to enter that information into the system and have some idea of what it's doing within the system so that we know and have assurance that we're recording the information as we should and that we're paying the proper payroll, doing the proper withholdings, handling our responsibilities with regard to our employees and their payroll taxes and our payroll taxes well. So we see the information here. We've got our two employees, Adam and Erica. We've only processed payroll for January. We're going to run the same system as we saw with the sales tax and assume that we're going to process the payroll and then pay it, pay the liabilities the following month. In other words, we entered the system for January, for the month of January. We're going to say that we owe the payroll taxes related to the January payroll in the following month in February. This system will change based on many different factors, where we are, what are going to be the regulations for that area, and also in terms of how much payroll we have could be factors that would change how often we have to pay the payroll. Also, the pay periods that we have, in other words, do we pay weekly, do we pay semi-monthly, do we pay uh, bi-weekly or monthly, those factors will have a differentiating factor as to when we have to actually pay the payroll taxes. So you have to look those up and see what is applicable to you. Our system here will be that we pay monthly and then we're going to pay the payroll taxes in the following month. Here's the process of the payroll information for the month of January. It is now February. We're going to pay the payroll taxes owed. So what does that mean? Note that if we think about these checks, if we go into the check for say this check for Adam Hamilton, a payroll check, You'll recall it's a little bit more complicated. We entered it in as a check, but there's not only two accounts affected. There's three accounts. There's the checking account and then two other accounts, meaning there's the expense. That's what was actually earned by this employee. And then what we took from them, we're just calling them payroll liabilities. This is a basic problem where we're just looking at federal liabilities, the big liabilities, meaning federal income tax, Social Security, and Medicare. So we took this from, th this, is, this is this employee's money. We took it from them. Why? Because they were forced to by the regulations to pay and take the taxes for the employee and pay it for them. So now we're holding on to this 1044 Theoretically, we never gave it to the employee, but it's their money typically, you know, uh, theoretically. <laughs> and now we're going to pay it to the government for the employee. So that's going to be a piece. That's Social Security, Medicare, 
federal income taxes. If we scroll back up, that's not everything we're going to pay. We also have to pay our share of payroll taxes based on the employee earnings that we recorded with this journal entry. So this journal entry shows that we have taxes over and above that we're going to pay. Here's the liability. Here's the payroll taxes. Now, again, how would we know this if we had an outside CPA firm doing it? They would give us some type of report. Here's just a simple uh, type of report that we could get with our two employees. And you can see how complicated it can get just with a couple employees uh, and how the payroll taxes work. So remember what we have. We've got these two employees. We'd get a report. And this would be their total earnings. We're saying they earned this much, respectively, between Adam and Erica. Then we took out Social Security from them. So this is part of what we owe. We haven't paid it to the government yet. We took Medicare from them. And then we took, uh, we took federal income tax from them. These are just the federal taxes. So that means that this is the total earnings for our two employees. We took total Social Security of this, Medicare of that, and federal income tax. So the net check they got is what they earned, this total, minus Social Security, Medicare, and income tax. Net check will add up to all the net checks for all of our employees are 4,169,633. That's the net check. So we owe then uh, the sum of Social Security, Medicare, income tax that we took from our employees. Not only that, but we had to pay over and above that based on their income for our portion of the payroll taxes as the employer, another matching Social Security and Medicare, another 307 and 77. So that's what we owe as of, as of, we're saying the end of February for the payroll that was processed in January. And that's what we're going to do now. So, that, so we're going to say this amount and this amount is really what is making up the liability. So that adds up to 1598 for our two employees, the withholdings, federal income tax, Social Security, Medicare, and our portion, employer portion, payroll taxes, Social Security, and Medicare. So that's going to be the amount that we, we need to basically pay in February for January's payroll, 1598 That's what we have in our liability, 1598 We don't have anything for February yet because we haven't processed payroll. If we had, we still would only pay the 1598 in February. We'll pay whatever's owed for February payroll in the following month in March. Now note that if we had the paid payroll, we can go down to the payroll activity and it'll process payroll in a similar fashion as we did with the payroll taxes. It would say we would enter the information into the paid payroll for uh, QuickBooks. It would then accumulate the taxes that were owed for us and then tell us, hey, this is how much you owe at this point in time. And it would help us to go through the process to make the withholdings, write the correct amount of the check, and then write the check to whoever we owe, including the federal government and any state governments that we owe. But note that we want to have some concept or idea of this so that we have some idea if something goes wrong because it is possible that something could go wrong. And when it does, payroll can be somewhat complex. So it is good if you get the support within QuickBooks or you get some support outside of QuickBooks to help with payroll, even if it's going to be, um, even if your payroll is fairly simple. So it's something we would advise to uh, take, take a look at and get some outside advice on what's the easiest and best method to uh, process, set up the payroll and get some advice in case there's any problems with that payroll setup. So we're going to go ahead and go through this process of paying the check now. In our system, we're just going to, of course, write the check for what we now owe to who we owe, which is basically the IRS, the government. The government's going to collect all of this that we took out, Social Security, Medicare, federal income tax, our portion of Social Security and Medicare, those are all federal taxes, different forms of federal taxes. We may have to write them with different checks depending on you know, how the system's going to be set up. We're going to write one check for all the uh, federal taxes in our example problem. To do that, we're going to go up top to the plus item up top and we're going to write a check. We're going to write the check to the Internal Revenue Service. That's We're going to have to set up a new vendor. So it's going to be the Internal Revenue Service. So there we have it. We'll say tab and set it up. I'm not going to put any more detail other than the name. We're going to say save. 
It's going to come out of the checking account. Then we'll go down to the category down here and we're going to pay off the liability. So we're looking for the payroll liability account. It's, it's going to be down here. We could find it in the liability section. I'm going to start typing it in payroll liability. So we want to make sure to pick up the liability, not the expense tab. And I think we are going to break it out between the types of taxes we're going to pay. We're going to pay the IRS, but we'll break it out between FIT, federal income tax, uh, Social Security, and Medicare. So this is, we could put in the description, January federal income tax, FIT. The amount, if we go back to our form here, it's going to be 830. So we'll input the 830 for the amount, 830. And that's going to be the first one. So now we're going to say save and new, and we'll make another one for Social Security and Medicare. So we'll say save and new. And then we'll have another check that will populate for us. We're going to enter this check uh, to the Internal Revenue Service as well. Internal Revenue Service, check it account. The same date, the end of the month. Check number should populate for us. And now, of course, it's trying to memorize that transaction. The category is good. But the memo we want to now change not to January FIT, but January Medicare. So now we want the January Medicare. The amount of the January Medicare is going to consist of both the employee portion and the employer. So we're going to have the 77 and the 77, the employee and employer portion, or the 154. So if we go back over, then we'll write another check related to just the 154 for Medicare. Then we'll do another one, one more for Social Security, breaking that out in its component of Social Security. So we'll say save and new. Once again, it's going to the Internal Revenue Service. Another check for payroll taxes, same date. We're going to scroll down. Payroll taxes is correct, but now we want January med, uh, Social Security. So we're going to say this is Social Security. And the amount there is going to be, once again, the employee and employer portion. Here's the employee. Here's the employer. We double it. That's the 614. So we're going to go back and say, all right. That's uh, 614, and that'll be that amount. So then we're going to say uh, save and close. Those are our three checks, save and close. And then if we go back to our reports, we're going to go to the balance sheet on the left side. We're going to go to the, oh, we'll go to reports on the left side, to the balance sheet then within reports. Scrolling back up, we're going to change the dates from 010119 to 123119, January through December 2019, and run that report. Scrolling to the checking account, looking at that checking account, we scroll down, we have our three checks that we should have been written as of the end of the time period. Here they are, they're a little funny order, but they're all in the 28th. We've got the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, the Internal Revenue Service. Those are our three checks for the uh, federal income tax, social security, and Medicare. Then if we go to the other side, it's going to payroll liability. So let's go look at payroll liability. Now, if we scroll up top and go back to the balance sheet, we're going to go to the liability account, which is payroll liability. It's now at zero because we paid it and we haven't processed payroll for February yet. So if we select this item, we'll see, okay, here's Erica, here's uh, Adam. These are our two employees. We process those, those employee payroll. And then we have the liabilities related to that payroll that have been recorded here. We have the journal entry increase, and here's the total liability. Now we're going to pay that. We paid it with three, ba three checks based on the type of liability we're paying. Social Security, Medicare, federal income tax. And we've paid it off. Now we're back down to zero, just like any other type of payable account. Just note that we may have some timing differences because if we had process payroll for February in our system, we then would have a liability still outstanding for February, which we would then pay uh, in March. So we're always going to be a month separate. And again, that system's going to differ depending on whatever our payroll structure is. Do we pay weekly? Do we pay monthly? Do we pay semi-annual? Do we pay semi-monthly? Do we pay bi-weekly? And what are the regulations in terms of when do we have to pay the payroll withholdings that we've withheld and the payroll taxes? What, how long do we have after the payroll has been processed before we have to pay it? That will differ. And so you're going to have to look up, up whatever specific rules are related to you. Uh, the system QuickBooks can, of course, help to set that up. When we have the paid payroll, we may look more into the paid payroll options later. Also note that as we process payroll, 
Uh, we'll have to do the, the quarterly reports, the 941s and the 940s at the end of the quarter. So usually if there's kind of an issue or a problem, we'll see it when we at least do the quarterlies. That's going to be every three months. So January, February, March at the end of March, April, May, June at the end of June, July, August, September at the end of September, and then at the end of the year in December. And if we don't see the problem, then oftentimes any problems that accumulate may not even be picked up until the end of the year, December, because that's when we do the W-2s. That's when we reconcile the W-2s and the W-3s the, and the 1099 or the 941 and the 940. So just realize that payroll could be going along pretty well, uh, or you think so, and there could be some problems that may not come to light until we start to reconcile those month-end reports. And then uh, some any problems that are there may may surface themselves at that point. It is possible to fix payroll and make adjustments and make amendments at a later time, but it's also one of those areas where you'd you'd rather spend more time usually. It's usually better off to spend more time up front and doing it right the first time. It'd be better off measuring twice and then cutting once rather than having to fix the problem later. Just For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.